the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. So David Warner's wife Candace is on a uh, podcast with uh, Cooper and Maddie Johns, right? Yep. So backstage with Cooper and Maddie Johns, it's called. Um, she's apparently rumoured to be on I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here too, by the way. Okay, she's oh, been she... doing a lot lately. She's on the back page regularly if you watch on Fox. She's just about there on a nightly occasion. Yeah. Um, uh, she has come out and um, in the interview talked about different things. Finances, Sean. He's apparently yeah. a huge spender, so she's... Yeah, yeah, so she's... Um, she gives him, an, you know, well, she and, gives and him an allowance. She said yeah. it's a generous allowance. Yeah. She's, like, like, she's not penny yeah, but she's all, but, she, but, but she's she said there's a limit to how much he can spend, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she said they're so connected during a game. He looks at her and she can sort of tell what he's doing. He gives her hand signals about what he's about to do. They really should televise that for the other team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah. Also, but what's she going to do? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, how does that make any difference? And the other interesting thing is um, uh, she's talking about scandals and she's fiercely protective of her husband and he's gone through a few tumultuous periods mm. of his career yeah. and she says that, she goes, I've got a little list of all the people that have said some really horrible things about him and there's been times where I can't bite my tongue. Writing a list. So she's got a list and a then, list. so what, if they then request an interview or something, she'll go, nah, you're on my list or how does, how does being on the list All I know work? is the oh, list exists. That's all yeah, I right. know is the so list. So she's exists. keeping receipts. Oh, I can basically. imagine. I can imagine that part yeah. because I so won't many be people doing are you still any writing stories yeah. about yeah. them yeah. and yeah. asking. Yeah. Yeah, he won't yeah. Be, yeah. On Big Bang Theory, um, Sheldon Cooper keeps a list. You really have a mortal enemy? Oh, in fact, I have sixty-one of them. <laughs> it's a list. Would you like to see the list? Oh, say no, say no, say no, say no. You just got off the list. Would you like back on it? <laughs> Do you have an enemies list? No. Do you have anyone that that, that, that has cr- wronged you in life and and you will hold a grudge I mean, against them forever? I, and I totally understand the. I mean, um, I have that. I just don't their, have a list of them. Their situ- <laughs> I, I understand their situation because when I was um, playing footy before, then I had a bit of a list. Yeah, for Did sure. Did you about so, like yeah. commentators so, and, and journalists? And journalists. journalists. And journalists are the ones that come for you, mate. Because some of them, when yes. they're just starting out, particularly at these newspapers here, they want to make th- a name. They got to make a name for them. Yeah. And there's one guy in particular, and I'm going to. So his name was Jay Rooney, and he wrote this <laughs> bloody article about me. He came for me massively. So, and I'll tell you what, in, if I'd have seen him in the streets, then I would have just pulverised him. I would have, oh, really? Yeah, because it was nasty stuff. And the, and what happens is... So he's calling it, with your head, essentially, yeah, saying yeah, yeah. you should and, be dropped and, and, and that kind of stuff. And your career's on the line, and the, and the way they yeah. make you out to be is like you're a bad person just yeah. trying to oh, do that's job. Mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, no yeah. time at all. So, so he was on your list. What, what? How did that? So, if he'd asked you for an interview, no, not, in not in a million years. years, not in a million years. Yeah, Matt. Wow. yeah. absolutely. Mine's not as full on as yours. Mine's the guy from Sumo Salad that used to. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no,
it would be. It would be satisfying. But, mm. um, I mean, I do continue to go there. In yes. New work. It's on my lunch break, but it's always such a pleasure. To you know what? Everybody so. else is trying to find the lotto <laughs> agents that bring them luck. You know, the yep. way you run mm. the thing or whatever, up yep. the border or whatever it might be. Yep. And you're going totally. to one where she delights in you losing. I, I, yes. I, you know what? And sometimes you, you want to be, like, it's nice to have a bit of, like resentment and hate towards you in a daily mix because mm. I the, just I for went, the light and shade. I'm in Subiaco here. There's this um, there's this one place that sells these amazing kebabs. When I was living over the road, I'd go there every Friday night and get a kebab. Mm. And they did not care about my being a customer. They did not care about my buying their goods. They did not care about customer service. They, were they didn't care about that you were a regular. So rude. And I loved it. I just thought it was so funny. And there's another guy at one of the delicatessens in a supermarket here in Perth. Whenever I'd go and ask for like shaved um, uh, a mild Hungarian salami, he'd go ugh. <laughs> Literally your job. I just thought it was really funny. Uh, <laughs> thanks Stella. Let's go to Keely in Mindari. Hi Keely. Hi, how are you going? Good, Keely. Good Keely. Keely. Who's on your list and what did they do to get there? Mine is really petty and looking back at it, he really didn't do much, but it got me for years. <laughs> yes, great. Uh-huh. I had a puppy who was very energetic. Yeah. And this guy had this little Pomeranian who was pretty well behaved. But anyway, <laughs> he walked past me one day at the beach. He said, oh, you've got your hands full there. That was it. That was enough. He, in my opinion, he had insulted my dog and me. I taught my kids that he wasn't a nice man. We called him Nemesis. The Nemesis. Well, after, he, after he said it, I then sat down at the beach and cried. I was so upset. While I was crying, my dog dug a hole underneath me because he really was a handful. <laughs> You're, no, trying, Keely. No. You're trying to hide the hole. Keely, Keely. never forget and never forgive. That is, no, he was, he was ne- we've now moved and yes. still he's still. like legendary that he's Nemesis. Yes. Nemesis. My kids are now fully grown mm. and they remember mm. Nemesis. Oh, you've got yes. your hands you've full got there. Your hands no. full there. Well, how dare he? <laughs> that was enough. How dare he? <laughs> to that he insulted time of my life. dog. Oh. That was it. I mean, if he'd said that about your kids, would you have been, would you have been a, a, as offended? <laughs> They were of handful, yeah. you know, but the dog, that was a little line too far. Can I say yeah. that I have not um, heard anything that is unreasonable? No. I think that uh, the, the two examples <laughs> we've heard so far yes. definitely deserve to be I on, a, a, on, to on be an on enemies list. list. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Fiona. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hi, Fiona. Fiona. May or may not be your real name. Um, <laughs> Fiona, yes. who's on your list and what did they do to get there? Uh, my cousins, we have not spoken to them in years, really, because two weeks before their wedding, mm-hmm. uh, we got notified that my sister and I have been uninvited to the wedding. <laughs> okay, so what, what did, yeah, what did you do? We couldn't go to the engagement party. Um, our parents had just split up. We oh. were 21 and 19, and yes. we had relocated, and we could not afford to get back to Perth. To attend the engagement party, okay, so we have a suspicion that it might be because of that. Um, but we were all set to go to the wedding, and our dad notified us two weeks before that they have decided to not invite us. <laughs> so, t- does that mean they never invited you at all, uh, or they invited you and then rescinded we the invitation? We don't know. But since then, we none of us have had a relationship. Oh, it's the no weirdest way. thing. Yeah, it's so bizarre, but <clears throat> we're probably on their list. They may be on our list. Mm, Who mm, knows? Oh. But life, life goes on, but still to this day, we have no idea why. Well, you're definitely how, on how their list. How long ago was this? How long ago was this again? This was 2018. Uh, yeah, okay. so six yeah, years ago. Were other cousins invited? Yeah, good question. Yes, our, so there was um, six of us. Oh, we're you're all on their list. We grew up together. Yeah. yeah. Um, and my sister and I were the only ones. So, so decided. really, the thing here is you were on their list first, mm. and then subsequently oh, yes. you yeah, have been on, on yes. their your list. So. I know, but it's just an unspoken word. Like, yes, can you give us course. a reason? Yeah, I know. Is is not going to an engagement party a no. reason to not invite Especially somebody to when the your wedding parents when are there's circumstances? Up. You're, yes. you're 19, 21, your parents yeah, are splitting up. State. Money. It's money. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it is a thing, though, because it happened recently to my sister and I as well. We didn't go to um, a close friend of ours uh, engagement party because, again, it was 
not where we live and we just didn't have yes. the money to get there at that time and we didn't get an invite to the wedding. But I guess mm. it is getting more popular where people have engagements and then don't mm. invite people to the wedding. It is interesting because mm. you, um, you, you you can't make it to a party but you can make a list. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can get right. on a list like that. Mm. Thank you, Fiona. <laughs> uh, Kim's in Alchemos. Hello. Hi. Hey, hey Kim. Good Kim. Hey, Kim. Okay. Kim. <laughs> Who's on your list and why? Well, it's actually my husband, um, a story about my husband. He takes his lunch to work every day yes. and he uses a 600ml bottle, um, empty water bottle and fills it up with fresh orange juice. Yeah. Yes. Well, he was taking it to this place of work and putting it in the fridge and for almost two weeks, every time he'd go to get his orange juice, somebody's either drunk all of it or drunk half of it. <laughs> yes. Oh, Kim, that would kill me. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and it really upset him. So he decided to get them back and he peed in the bottle oh. in the fridge. Did he? <laughs> and and that, did he, that, so did he find out result? the culprit? He didn't find out the culprit, but nobody ever touched his orange juice again. Oh. <laughs> Well played, yeah. I mean, it's extreme. <laughs> yeah, and luckily your husband does urinate pulp. Yes, so that's no right. one could tell the no, difference. Yes. <laughs> Uncanny. Yeah, that would tickle the urethra. <laughs> oh, sure. We don't say urethra enough on this show, do we? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely a gap. That's me. <laughs> this is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Headed our way for the muster, which is Saturday the 13th of April at Claremont Showground. It's going to be a cracking day out. And the headline artist is none other than Morgan Evans, who joins us now. Hi, Morgan. Good morning. How you doing? Yeah, we're oh, going great, Morgan. Morgan, um, can I just say that the amount of people that get blown away when they find out that you're Australian, how, <laughs> how, how often does that happen to you? <laughs> yeah, I would say it's the most commonly asked question over here in the States. Why, when you talk, do you sound like that? And when you sing, the accent goes off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Morgan, you, you're from New South... Uh, sorry, um, New South Wales. You're Newcastle. from New, Newcastle. Mm. Were, you, were you brought up on a farm? Yeah. How did you get into country music? No, I mean, I wouldn't call it a farm. Yeah. Um, my <laughs> folks had a, a little bit of land and we had a bunch of animals, but it wasn't like a, a working farm or anything like that. But um, they grew up in Armidale, which is, uh, I guess, three or four hours west of Newcastle and... Um, there's always this country music in the house and we spent a lot of time out that way and I guess Tamworth as well and um, mm. it was always part of my life. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, I want to know, because I recently have become a proud owner of two pairs of cowboy boots that I bought um, legitimately <laughs> and they're, they're, they're traditional, they're from ASOS. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering... Like, the Nashville arm yeah, of ASOS. Being a country yeah. superstar, do you, because I don't know, it doesn't seem to be in your mix, but do you have cowboy boots? Mate, I, I find it hard to get my feet into those things, like yeah. the big tall leather ones. Yeah. Yeah. About? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The ones no, from I've ASOS got, have got a zip. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've got some. Um, I've got some R and Williams for special occasions, so um, I'm giving it Australian in that way. <laughs> no, no, no. So nothing with spurs. That's yeah. weird. Isn't okay, it? but what about a hat? <laughs> oh, or the big belt buckles. That, you yeah. know, have you bought any over there, over in the, U the US? Those big belt buckles. I don't know if he's a buckle guy. I'm not a buckle guy, mate. I've got a couple of Akubras too. Though I keep it Aussie in the uh, in the cowboy. Oh, good, 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 good. But I mean, yeah. is that acceptable? Are they going for that, or do they think you're just like a bit of an oddity? Oh look, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not it's like I show up dressed up as an Australian to show. I really, I really I honestly just wear. I honestly just wear jeans and a shirt, generally with no sleeves, and just like enjoy playing music. But um, yeah. the cowboy, thing, the cowboy thing is a thing over here, you know, especially yeah. the fellas from Texas grew up riding bulls and all that kind of thing. So, um, I mean, it's no joke to those guys. No, yeah, 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 yeah. So you're in Nashville right now, yeah? I'm in Nashville right now. Yeah, we just finished uh, the first day of rehearsals for this Australian tour, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's all getting so close. Have you seen Nicole Kidman and um, <laughs> Keith? Uh, Keith Urban? Because that's the only thing that we really know about Nashville. Um, and, you know, of course, um, of course. It, it feels like, is it true, is there like a busker on every corner trying to break into the industry there? It, it, what's it like? I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like if you if you get in an Uber or if you're um, buying a coffee or something like that, you're probably talking to someone that has a demo tape in their back pocket or yeah. a SoundCloud link on their phone or something like that, <laughs> um, for sure. But, I mean, the, the main street down here, Broadway, is the most famous spot, and if you ever get here, that should be your first stop. And, I mean, I don't know how many bars are on the street, probably um, 50 or something like that, and every single one has a live band from... 11 in the morning till about 3 in the morning the next day. So wow. um, there's plenty of music. 
seen and heard and, um, and you know, some of the best people from all over the world come here to do it. So it's a pretty exciting place. Yeah. Is it an amazing place where you get to meet with people or work with people that can really enhance what you're trying to put across as well, Morgan? Yeah, man. I mean, that's the, the reason I'm here is for the community. That, that's yeah. the thing yeah. that makes it. So I mean, so much of the the greatest, or my favorite music in the world, has come from this town. And and since I got here, as someone that writes songs, that's kind of the thing you fall in love with. Is that there's so many people that do the same thing, and inevitably, you know, you click with some people more than others, and you find your your crew. And um, and yeah, that's that's been a great experience over the last. You know, I've been here almost nine years now. So. Wow. Um, uh, I feel like I fit in in a lot of ways, which is a nice feeling too. Hey, Moggs, what, what, what is the uh, country music scene's opinion on Beyonce doing Texas Oldham mm. and then getting into the country music art, uh, 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 rec- uh, sorry, um, charts? Because it's a very clever move from her to see if she can dominate another genre. Yeah, I mean, and she's awesome, and it's kind of pretty cool to have cowboy boots at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Get them at ASOS. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, man, oh, look, I don't know. I can't talk on behalf of the country music community, but I've listened to the record, and I'm, and I'm a Beyonce fan. Um, but, you know, I don't know where that fits in in Nashville or, or on the radio or whatever, but I know a lot of people love it, which is great. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's great for music and, and spreading the good word, especially someone like that that's huge all over the world, you know, with a, a genre of music that's traditionally in English-speaking countries only. And um, she has the ability to sort of push it even further than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Yeah, she does. yeah, that, yeah that she's bringing a new audience to country music, essentially, isn't she? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. So, I, so when you get over here to Claremont Showgrounds, mm. which we get to see you on 13th of uh, April, we're talking mm. about... Um, for the muster? Yeah, the muster. Mm. Those types of events, man, I can just picture a whole lot of people cracking whips and just mad whistling. And not just that. Setting it up to me seems just cheap because you don't like hire anything. You just hay bales, hay bales, hay bales, yeah, yeah, hay, yeah. Bales, hay mm. bales, hay bales. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I actually haven't done a, um, I haven't done a festival in Perth before. We, we finished our last tour in Perth. Uh, we played a couple of shows at the, is it the Astor Theatre? Yeah. Yes, yes, it was. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, the shows are awesome. So um, when the the invite to come down and play to this one came in, we said yes immediately. And uh, I don't know how long this festival's been around, but I'm really excited to be a part of it. And uh, I know the lineup is really great too, like a yeah. really strong Australian yeah, Becky Cole well. and yeah, yeah. Um, well, you might be yeah. able to settle something for us. Um, we can't decide if it's pronounced rodeo or rodeo. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> when it comes to country music, it's definitely rodeo. Okay, okay good. Because so I, I, I say rodeo, rodeo. It's Rodeo Drive in yeah. LA. That's what confused us. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what that is. Is that That's just like rodeo, but fancy maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're right. I think yeah. I just tried to trick yeah, it it's up. it's rodeo with Prada slapped so on it. So it ain't our first rodeo. Yeah. Okay, um, we got it. Uh, what size shoe are you, Morgan? <laughs> what, what size boot do you take? We'll have some cowboy boots waiting at your hotel for you. <laughs> Uh, some ones with some cowboy boots with a zipper. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm size 11. If you... oh, size 11. 11. Okay. Okay. Yes, because I've got two pairs. Because oh. I, I got one pair because I thought, okay, they're good because they're like proper leather. The other ones are sort of like vinyl, which I think you'd like. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and the, 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 the vinyl ones are, are an 11, 11. so I've got them a bit more. So don't worry about packing shoes, Morgs. I've yep. got you. Got I've got you, boo. We're here for you. This Western Australian um, generosity is really yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. Hospitality, man. I know, what we're about over here. Um, you can catch Morgan's <laughs> fine work at the Master a- April 13th at the Claremont Showgrounds in his new cowboy boots. Oh, Tickets from themaster.com.au. It's a pleasure, Morgan. Thanks for chatting to us this morning. Love it to chat, guys. See you soon. Good on you, Morgan. Bye. Bye. The Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. To be the stuff of legend... Oh. Wouldn't that be amazing? Would be to make amazing. Such Not an always. impact. Make such an impact that for years and years afterwards, people talk about either you or something that you did. Well, a girl named Julie Bundock, she is now going to be the stuff of legend at her real estate agency that she works for because she accidentally burnt down a multi-million dollar property to the ground while preparing for an open house. And her employer has been ordered to pay more than $850,000 mm. in damages. Now, how is that possible? There was... So this house was worth three million bucks, mm. yeah. right? Yep. So she was there um, during a home open. It's being rented at the, uh, as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, she went outside just to check in the back porch and she saw there was some bedding drying out there. And she went, oh, wait, that looks a bit dirty. So she grabbed it all and chucked it in a cupboard, I think, under the stairs on a metal shelf. That was extremely close to a light which she left on then she walked out 
that caught on fire. And burnt Whoa. the house down. So, well, she eight hundred thousand dollars worth of damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, she turned Jeez. to the owner Pete, who was there during the open house, and said, "Oh my God, Pete, I think I've burnt your house down." <laughs> so she knew. So once the fire happened, she knew that it was probably her fault and admitted it. Oh, which, liability. I know. Yeah. I know. That is, as, as soon as you start work at that real estate agency, yeah. they will all tell you about the tale, the legend of Julie. 100% who, who, they will. Who, who during a home open burnt down a multi-million dollar mansion. Like if I was a real estate agent, I'd be worried at home opens all the time that, you know, something's going to get nicked, you know, like mm. a, one of the little knickknacks or whatever is going to get nicked. That To me, that would be the worst thing. Burning down the entire property. Yes. You lose the listing, well, right? That, that that, that I think you may not. <laughs> what about yes. the, the, the Latam Airlines the other day, um, that plane that dropped yes. and all those people got injured? They're saying that they um, they think it was a flight attendant in the cockpit at that time serving the pilot a meal and accidentally she switched on... She, she, hit she, a switch. Hit a switch and that made the plane nose dive, which is a very important switch. Yes, yeah, and probably important. shouldn't be that easily hit should by a plate. should be covered with one of those like plastic yes. things that they have on submarines I you agree. have to lift and then press. Oh, yeah, I like them. Yeah, but people, very important. Would, people will forever talk, talk about, about that. the yeah. things of watch what you do with the tray in yes. the cockpit. Those workplaces change forever. Yes. You have those big meetings and say those... Yes, big, everything God's changes. Saying, don't put yeah. the sheeting <laughs> on another bit of metal under a light. Yeah. yeah. And turn um, the light on. I yeah. knew you're going to get Sam. Sam's got a, try, a story for us. Mm. Um, uh, has anything happened here, that stuff of legend? I mean, there was that time that Ross swore while the mics were on. I didn't leave him on. <laughs> and I swore twice, let's, to be honest. <laughs> and Ross, who has Very the, cle- the cleanest was mouth the in the building. Too, wasn't it was it? not. It was not. It was, like, I was coming in to tell Ellie and Katie Lamb at the time. They did something that Ellie wouldn't let me do on air. And I just came in and said, you know what? F you and F you. Like, jo- jokingly. Yes, but yes. we didn't know. And then um, we got a call on the traffic line saying, the mics are up. <laughs> and we didn't know what went to it. Can I say, every time the mics have been left up for us, there is some mm. deity over us yeah. watching us going and protecting us. Yes. You guys are way got, more we've lucky. we've said nothing but nice things. Because no. we're lovely people. <laughs> <laughs> we're lovely people. I've never sworn in my life. No, it's, it's pretty no. legendary around here anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I thought yeah, I was right. gone, yeah. but I wasn't, so yeah. Sam, thank you. Sam, mm. tell us the story of where you used to work. I used to work at a shoe store. Yeah. Um, um, it was a beautiful big one in the city, and it was multi layers and very colourful. It's yes, zomp. Anyway, <laughs> oh anyway, there was a girl uh, who worked there before I got there, and um, but you would hear stories about her all the time. Anyway, she had heated soup up in the microwave mm. to boiling point almost, and poured it on herself, and then. Claimed compo on it. So poured it, spilt it on herself. Spilt or it poured it. It. Yeah, right. She didn't yeah. deliberately pour no, it on herself. No, no, no. But she claimed workers' compensation for something that was purely her fault. 100%. Do we have soup here? <laughs> <laughs> we should. Don't have soup all the time. Because <laughs> I'll bathe in some hot minestrone <laughs> to, uh, to get some money. You want to talk about the other one, the other yes. legendary one from? from we realised this, this whole place, every every every, every wall is a legend. Um, there was a guy that used to work here, and um, he was doing his Sunday shift, and he obviously thought that he was a bit hungry. And there's a rule here: you cannot leave this studio when it's on air. We well, can't leave the building. The building. Yes. yes, yes. Let alone the studio. You can pop. You can pop to the kitchen yes. and get a cup yeah, of coffee. Yeah, but you can't leave for yes. your entire shift. You just can't. Um, uh, you got to be in here, like most workplaces anyway. So he um popped over to the road to get some KFC. Um, and then came back. <laughs> the elevator doors opened, and who was it? The, the big boss. boss. The big boss. The boss. Popped in the on boss the was, Sunday. She popped in on the Sunday, and she's she's like looking around. And this is weird. There's nobody on air. And then she's gone to um, the lift, and the lift opened, and there is the announcer holding a bag of KFC. Yes. <laughs> it's fairly incriminating, isn't it? I love it. Where have you been? Um, <laughs> uh, Amanda's in Woodlands. Hello. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, Amanda. Amanda. Okay, what's the stuff of legends as far as workplace (laughs) blunders goes? Oh, well, I'm legend in amongst my friendship group for parties. We used to have a party at a friend's house which would go... Um, it was two levels, and I was a very, I'm a very lightweight drinker, and uh, I got a bit high on West Coast coolers. Oh. And as I was coming down the stairs, I managed to somehow trip, and I fell knees first and wedged myself in the stairwell. So I had oh. to. <laughs> what part of you? What part what do you of mean? you? How do you wedge yourself oh, in the stairwell? You know, if you if you imagine someone's W sitting, you know, the knees are first and the feet are tucked behind you like a frog. Yes. yes. And then my feet were caught on the toes of the stairs. Um, on the on the walls of the stairs, and my knees were downwards, and I couldn't. I was. I just couldn't put myself upright. And I was yelling in the stairwell, "Help! 
Help! And finally someone came and I had to get two people to rescue me. It was so mortifying. Oh, so now whenever I... Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> So now whenever we're out and I'm drinking, they say, now watch the stairs, watch the stairs. Stuff the legends. Yes. Can I just say, and, and off of West Coast cool I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've all been there, but you had to drink a few to get to that that point. You Isn't know what I mean? so funny? Um, uh, at that stage, it was people either were drinking a West Coast coolers or wild peach that yes. came in that cask. It came in a cask, yeah. Tropicana was another one that, was, that, came, that came in a cask as well. Um, <laughs> they were heady days. Um, thanks, Amanda. That is the stuff of legend. Talia's in Hi, Fed. Hi, Talia. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Charles. Charles. All right, Charles. What what is the legend? Um, my legend is at work. So I work at a daycare centre, and I was thirty two weeks pregnant, and I went into false labour mm. at work. Yes. So we're talking full blown. It's my third baby as well. So we're talking full blown like birthing positions. I'm full blown contractions, I'm on the ground, I'm moaning. My boss has like pulled me off the floor. She started freaking out. She's calling all my family, like come and get her. It's on. We think she's going into labor. Um, went to the hospital and no baby didn't want to come. So oh. so you then did you then just go back to work the next day and everybody's like looking yep. at you like wait, 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 what what did we what happened yesterday? Yeah, yes. What's with all the aunties, Talia? <laughs> Yeah, that was that was exactly what happened. I messaged my boss that night and was like, Oh hey, um, so everything's fine. I'm fine. Baby's not coming anytime soon, so I'll see you tomorrow for my shift. Tell you what, like, though. What do you mean? If if you're gonna have a baby anyway, a daycare centre's yeah, pretty I mean, good. Yeah, exactly, because you can that's finish right. shift. Go, exactly. straight, go straight to the source, isn't it? <laughs> and, and you get a reaper. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.